the oblique order, deliberately weakening part of your line in order to strengthen a flank. The goal is to delay action on the weaker parts of the line and allow the stronger flank to overwhelm the enemy, ultimately ending in a decisive victory. This tactic took dozens of battles to finally pull off, so let's very quickly go through the evolution of what not to do and end with the best way to pull this one off in a real battle. For starters, both sides have the exact same army composition. We start with 5 divisions in total, one group of 60 top tier pikemen and the rest mid tier spearmen. The goal is to position our best troops on one flank and load up that side with numerical superiority. The massive enemy formations swarm our left flank, so we reposition our elite pikemen to counter and fill the gap with one of our reserve spearmen divisions. They heavily outnumber our main body, so we stack the unengaged spearmen within our outnumbered spearmen to try and hold. The idea was to have our pikemen destroy the low tier spearmen and roll up that flank. Unfortunately, our main lane crumbles before we could inflict enough damage. It was a close battle, but still a loss, at 396 kills to 429 losses. Let's try it again with the same setup, but this time our troops are moved more proactively to meet the enemy. The battle lines are much less chaotic this time, and we're able to take their left flank with reserve troops. Our second reserve division is used to reinforce the center that's taking heavy losses. We fully envelop their left flank and move the elite pikemen to help center. Unfortunately, our center once again took heavy losses, and the momentum is too much for our elite troops to stop. 403 kills to 434 losses. Very similar results, even with the better initial battle line. The biggest issue is the center's inability to hold out long enough, so we add more troops to those two divisions, but still hold the elite pikemen on the left flank. This time we have enough troops to avoid being flanked, allowing our pikes to roll up their left quickly. The pikes are then sent down the line, quickly cleaning up the enemy troops. However, our center once again crumbles and our pikes are left to fight on their own. While this is certainly a victory, it's Pyrrhic at best with 425 kills and 379 losses. I didn't want to give up on the idea of having a heavy flank, so I tried it one last time. The enemy have a huge numbers advantage in the center when the lines meet, but we hold numerical superiority on both flanks. Even with these huge quality and quantity advantages on the left, we can't eliminate the enemy quickly enough to beat our center's collapse. We get a second engagement that's perpendicular to the initial battle lines and end up grinding the enemy down. 426 kills to 367 losses. Slightly better than the previous battle, but not great. Now onto the two best wins of the 40 plus battles that I recorded. This time we put our main battle line in a shield wall, two ranks deep, in hopes of lasting just a little bit longer, giving our elite pikemen enough time to dominate. The pikes were sent further forward in order to pull some of the enemy's main line towards them. The main battle line is slightly lopsided so they are pulled back and condensed to match the enemy's line. The enemy's left is doomed and it's only a matter of time before they are enveloped and crushed. The main line is pulled back yet again, allowing more time for the pikes to enter the fray. Because of the delaying tactics from our center, we're able to buy more time for the pikes to clean up. By the end, it's a complete loss for the enemy. 500 kills and 396 losses. But I was able to do even better for the next and final battle. We start with three divisions. Our main battle line on the right, elite pikes on the left, and a small reserve division of spearmen in the rear. This time, instead of pulling the main battle line back after the enemy reaches our lines, we pull them back at the start of battle, delaying their involvement even longer. The lines don't meet cleanly and some adjustments must be made, but we're able to pull a nice flank with our reserve spearmen. The pikes are slightly outnumbered, but with some repositioning, they're able to maintain an even front line. Both lines seem to be doing very well, so we run a few cowards down who try to flee from their duty. Our pikes emerge victorious after several minutes and help clean up the other flank. Finally, a solid result. 438 kills with only 269 losses, nearly 2 to 1 KDR. And because I know some of you will say F1, F3 in the comments section, here you go. Both sides mindlessly slam into each other, split into two separate battles, then meet back in the middle for a final showdown, and end in a slight defeat. 480 to 440. The key to making this tactic work is proactively moving the weaker main battle line back, giving the stronger flank more time to overrun the enemy and create local superiority throughout the battle. And while this tactic works really well for two slow moving infantry heavy armies, it would get crushed by a highly mobile cavalry force. Check out this video next to see how I used real Mongolian tactics to win while heavily outnumbered. A huge shout out to the YouTube members and Patreon supporters who continue to support my small channel. Thank you all so much. The main battle line is slightly lo- <clears throat>